he's not doing too well. People are like, he's such a heartthrob. Is he? Because he's acting like a minor. So I'm not quite sure how to take that. Hey everyone, what's up? My name's Kate. Thanks for joining me today. And if you couldn't tell from the title of today's video, we're going to be doing a reading vlog. Yay! <laughs> I was going to do a reading vlog of City of Thorns by C.N. Crawford but I DNF'd it about 20% in because it was it was bad. So we're doing another one, I'm going to be reading it on my Kindle. We're going to be reading Behind the Net I think it's called. No, we're going to be, <laughs> we're going to be reading Consider Me. <laughs> we're going to be doing a reading vlog today. We're going to be reading Consider Me by Becca Mack, which is the first book in the Playing for Keep series. Let's read the synopsis, shall we? Because I don't know what this book is about. Carter Beckett is the NHL's resident bad boy, top player both on the ice and in the bedroom, and quite possibly the sexiest man to ever grace my field of vision. But worst of all, he knows it. He's arrogant, self-centered, and the man doesn't seem to know what a filter is, let alone how to use one. He's had everything served to him on a silver platter, including endless strings of women, and apparently I'm up next. His only problem? I have no intention of falling for his shit. Um, charm. Oh, that's, that's cringy. It literally cuts it off, like, before even saying the word it just oh god no oh no what have i got myself into i have the solution to all my sexual frustrations in a drawer at home and it's far less complicated than carter beckett sure he may be pretty but he's also a walking talking reminder for you to wrap it before you tap it but then i start letting my guard down and he starts showing me pieces of himself i had no intention of seeing the bricks surrounding me may be tumbling down one by one but i'm not sold yet which means for the first time in his life carter's the one begging for my time, my trust, for a single chance. For me to just consider him. Consider Me is book one in the Playing for Keep series, a series of interconnected standalone mature hockey romances containing heat, swoon, laughs, and a ride on the mo mo I was meant to say emotional roller coaster, but that just didn't happen. So yeah, we're gonna start reading it and see how it goes because I've seen people talk about this book. I have no idea what it's about apart from what we just read on the synopsis so oh let's get cracking shall we sorry that is not how this book starts page one page one by the way this is going to contain spoilers so if you don't want me to spoil this book for you don't watch this video okay just putting it out there <laughs> let me read this passage to you <laughs> rolling onto my back i inhale sharply and throw a hand over my head i'm spent so i take a moment to catch my breath before i toss my legs over the edge of the bed and sit up pulling the condom off my quickly deflating <laughs> oh, oh i can tell we're in for a ride with this one jesus God. that is probably the wildest way i've ever seen a book start i'm now on chapter four <laughs> what the fuck is this book so the first three chapters are all in carter's point of view and to summarize it's just him going oh, i'm so amazing i'm carter beckett i'm the captain of the vancouver vipers blah blah blah, blah. women love me there's nothing in this world that i can't get i'm so rich i'm so pretty blah blah blah, blah. he said something and i cannot remember for the life of me what it was but it was like yeah so he's like talking about himself and he's like i'm sure like any ordinary man would have like difficulty saying no or whatever and he's like but i'm not ordinary i'm carter beckett and for some reason i just hate this guy i actually hate him at like the end of chapter three we meet olivia who's going to be our main girl in this i really like her she kind of like just gives back to him and like just sees right through the he finds out that she played ice hockey for 15 years and he's like oh my god she has a brain cell when it comes to hockey like that's another tick in my box she just doesn't give him anything to work with she's like uh-huh okay and then he says some like really arrogant like you don't know who i am do you and she's like you're carter beckett and then he i hate i have i mentioned that i hate carter because he says the stupidest ever he goes i want to you silly maybe put you in the penalty box <laughs> and, he, and he also says i've got a feeling you're the type of song i'd play on repeat <laughs> oh 
and then the end of chapter four is just Olivia walking away and being like have you has anyone ever turned you down and he's like no I'm Carter Beckett and she's like well then it was the first time for everything enjoy your night <laughs> she just leaves that's where we're at we're at chapter four I'm probably gonna carry on reading just for a little bit and then go get some food because I'm getting a bit peckish if it's like satire in a way then it's done amazingly well like it's yes like you can tell that he is an arrogant and you're not meant to like him but if it's if it's meant to be played as straight then absolutely not so I'm hoping it's satire and like it's making fun of like arrogant men but yeah chapter four we are now finally on Olivia's point of view and Olivia seems like a like she seems amazing she seems like the type of woman I would want to be so I'm gonna carry on reading for a little bit and then we'll see where the night takes us okay quick update because a cute thing just happened and I hate that I <laughs> found it as cute as I did so basically some stuff has passed and then Olivia and Kara her best friend who is dating Carter's best friend have gone to watch one of like their games basically and they're sat behind the bench the vipers are like on the ice like warming up and stuff before their game and Kara says to Olivia oh like Kara's been asking about you like he's been talking to Emma about you and Emma is Kara's boyfriend who's best friends with Carter lives like <laughs> yeah sure he has then all of a sudden Carter just like slaps himself into the boards and is like tapping on the glass like really hard olivia's like just trying to ignore him and he's like right in front of her and she's just like looking anywhere and everyone like that's around them is like oh my god like carter's trying to get the attention of a woman but why isn't she like giving the attention to him and so <laughs> he like bangs hard like the more she ignores him the harder he's like slapping on like the perspex he goes live 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 carter chance punctuating each call of my name with a tap on the glass what i whisper yell finally spinning his way throwing my hands overhead his grin is explosive handsome sexy infuriating leaning over the boards he stares down the length of his stick at me the tip resting on the top of the glass hi <laughs> i love it when people do that and i have no idea why i just find it so cute and funny i'm like that's adorable i still don't really like carter that much but <laughs> this this okay I don't mind this but that's all I had to say okay hi so I'm on page 60 I'm 14% of the way through and can I just say I hate Carter Beckett with a passion I hate him hate him but basically so after the game that Olivia and Cara went to they met up with Emmett and Carter afterwards. Carter managed to get a dance with Olivia and so they were dancing and then he was like, do you wanna get out of here? We can get food, I'm not gonna try anything, I promise. And so Olivia's like, okay, cool, we'll do that. Let me just go to the bathroom quickly and then we'll head out. So she goes to the bathroom and then as she's coming out, she sees Carter standing with another woman and they're like talking intimately. I guess so they're like whispering in each other's ears or whatever Olivia's like what the hell am I doing I don't like this guy and that's the exact reason why I don't like him so she like leaves and then the next chapter Carter's at a fundraiser for this thing called the family project which is like a charity to help um kids who are waiting to be adopted and they're doing a fundraiser and he sees Olivia go into the bakery and so he like bolts after her and he's like why did you leave on friday like you just left me like you just walked out and she was like you were with another woman like tell me why i would stick around with you for some one-on-one -on -one time when you were flirting with a woman like a foot away from me and carter's like well that stuff just kind of happens wherever i go like i don't have control over that in his like little bit he was like oh I don't even know if I should be saying it but it's the truth and like that's all I can give Olivia and I'm like yeah okay but there are like better ways you could have phrased it and he is like pleading his case and Olivia is just there like well and he's like oh um you can't like compare yourself to these women because you're completely on a different level like they're all down here and you're like up here and for some reason, Olivia is just like, oh my god, that's so sweet. Olivia, babe, I had such faith in you. What the hell are you doing? And so he's like, do you want to come 
over to the fundraiser and she's like oh I can't and then she just goes anyway so Olivia needs to get her mojo back and Kyle needs to stop pissing me off because he keeps making excuses and he just seems really immature like he laughs at everything that isn't funny and like he just acts like a 15 year old boy for some reason like a 25 year old man acting like a 15 year old gives me the ick <sighs> he's not doing too well people are like he's such a heartthrob is he because he's acting like a minor so i'm <laughs> not quite sure how to take that i'm back with another update so we are now on page 101 i cannot remember where i left you guys to be honest we're 23 percent of the way through i can't remember where i left you guys i think it was when they were at the fundraiser so basically she leaves the fundraiser and carter invites olivia to a new year's eve party and she's like okay but it's not a date and he's like gotcha and as she's getting the car she's like i'll see you on new year's eve and he's like not a date and she's like not a date shuts the car door and he's like it's a date roll around to new year's eve and olivia pulls up and she sees carter there and like everyone else is there so we've got cara emmett adam garrett and i think that's it i there might be someone else but i don't think there is but um so Adam and Garrett are two other people that are on the hockey team along with Emmett and Carter and then Cara is Emmett's girlfriend, Olivia, okay, okay. And I immediately have fallen in love with Adam and Garrett. They're just amazing. They play beer pong and they make a deal and Carter's like, if I win, I get to kiss you at midnight. And Olivia's like, okay, what do I get if I win? And he's like, you won't win. I win at everything. I'm Carter Beckett and Olivia's like, I'm an undefeated beer pong champion. I have 108 undefeated wins. So she's like, okay, well if I win, you have to take me to go see Frozen 2. Little does she know, Carter is the biggest fan of Disney movies ever. And he's like, I win either way. So really this just works out in my favor either i get to kiss you or i get to take you on a date and watch a disney movie which i love so and so they play beer pong she wins and then it gets to midnight and carter kisses olivia now this is where it starts to get interesting because it's their first kiss and obviously sparks fly or whatever everything goes to shit. so basically Olivia runs off and Kara follows her. Garrett's just like racking in the money because he made a bet <laughs> of whether they were going to kiss at midnight or not. Carter like goes across the room like he goes into another room and Emmett follows him and is like you f like her and he's like of course I do. They overhear Olivia and Kara's conversation where Kara's like you like him and Olivia's like of course I do like he's funny he's kind he's like he makes me laugh in a way that no one's made me laugh before and then it goes quiet and they disappear and then Kara comes back into the room but she's on her own and so Kara's like F Olivia's gone she's left I've really messed things up Kara's like what is your end game with Olivia because remember Carter is a f boy so he like usually just uses women and then we'll just get rid of them and everyone's trying to like protect Olivia because Olivia isn't someone who does one night stands like she's not a casual relationship type person and she's told carter this so many times she's like i will not sleep with you just for you to then leave me in a week and get with another girl i want a relationship i want to settle down with someone and carter's like i want that too but he can't bring himself to say the words because he has this like fear of commitment i guess and he's like what if i do it wrong what if like i hurt her all of this sort of stuff cara tells carter that olivia's upstairs she went to look for a bathroom and just give her a couple of minutes so carter gives her a couple of minutes and then ends up looking for her and he finds her in his bedroom on like the balcony bit that overlooks like all of these mountains and this really nice horizon and she's got a fire going and she's like huddled up under a blanket and she's asleep and so carter sits down next to her and they she wakes up and then they have a conversation and basically carter's like this is how i feel what do you think and olivia's like yeah i mean like i like you but i don't trust you 
I never know when you're being genuine. I never know if it's just because you're doing all of this stuff to get into my pants. Like it just, it doesn't line up. Like I don't know which version of you is the real you. So Carter's like, okay, so I need to earn your trust. If I earn your trust, will there be a possibility of us having a future together? And Olivia's like, we'll see. A few minutes pass and Olivia is telling Carter all about where she grew up in Ontario. Then an hour and a half later, everyone leaves apart from Olivia and he is like just stay the night you don't want to leave but she's like I, I don't want to go home yet and so he's like okay so sleep tonight like stay the night um we can have like a slumber party we can watch a movie and then you can sleep in my bed I'll take the spare room and I'll make you breakfast in the morning <laughs> and she's like slowly getting into bed she's like testing the mattress and stuff so he goes I'll make you breakfast in the morning and maybe we could talk more and then olivia's like what will you make me and carter goes waffles french toast bacon eggs i'll make you a turkey dinner if you want just get in the damn bed to be fair bless his heart carter is trying at this point carter's like i want olivia i've never wanted a woman before in my life like i want a love like my mum and dad had and unfortunately his dad died like seven years ago and his mum hasn't been the same since and that's kind of why he's worried to like commit into a relationship because he's worried that once you give yourself to someone you're making yourself vulnerable and weak and he doesn't want that he doesn't want to feel like he's not in control and that he's not strong and he doesn't like giving the power over to someone else to give them the ability to hurt them basically now that he wants olivia he's like trying to undo all of this not trauma but like way of thinking i guess and so he's like slowly trying to earn olivia's trust and also work on his commitment issues. I feel like that's quite interesting. I feel like that gives us more context to have a better perspective on why Carter is the way that he is and like why he's let himself be portrayed as this like ladies man. So I guess I can't really hate him as much as I did at the beginning, but I still don't like him, okay? I haven't been won over yet. He doesn't need to win over Olivia, he needs to win over me okay so buckle up carter we've got a long ride ahead of us okay so we're on chapter 16. <sighs> where did i leave you i think i left you guys when olivia like agreed to stay the night at carter's house they ended up having sex and then in the morning olivia is frantically trying to get all of her stuff she's like not even looking at carter she's not talking to him they have a little argument and olivia drops her phone and Carter picks up and he sees that there's a news article about him and it's like new year same Carter like 12 girls that Carter's been pictured with and what we can expect from him in the new year. Olivia's like I see that and I see exactly the reason why I don't want to get involved with you because you think I'm strong but I'm not above myself to admit that I'm incredibly insecure when it comes to things like that and she's like I would just be dating you waiting for the day that you get bored of me and that we will inevitably break up and you will break my heart and stuff like that. And Carter's like, you're the one that's leaving. Like, not me, like, this is not what I want. I said I wanted to talk about what was going on between us and now you're just running away. So this is all gonna be on you. And Olivia's like, yeah, I know, but it was a mistake. And, and Olivia leaves. And that's where we're at, at the moment. We're on chapter 16. So really, it's gone zero to 100 pretty quickly. And we're only 25% Oh, we're 28% of the way through the book. So, yikes. What the f <sighs> I'm now on page 199. We're 44% of the way through, so we're nearly halfway through the book. Let's have a little catch up, shall we? That's a horrible angle, but we're working with it. So where did I leave you guys? I think I left you guys when Olivia runs out of Carter's house after they have sex. A few weeks go by and they don't talk. Everyone, it sort of gets on board with trying to get them back together. What happens? Oh yeah, so they end up going to the cinema and Emmett texts Olivia and is like, he's still going to watch the movie by the way. Cause do you remember they made a bet and they had to go see Frozen 2 because he lost at beer pong. Emmett's like, He's still going, this is the time he's going, these are the seats. If you wanna go, go. But if you don't want to, then there's no pressure. Olivia goes to the theater, she watches Frozen 2 with Carter and Carter's like really nervous. He like won't stop like yelling at her at a very loud level and he like runs away from her and stuff. They go get 
coffee afterwards and they sit there until midnight and talk. They're going to an engagement party the next day because Carter, no, Kara and Emmett got engaged. They're going to an, so they're all going to the engagement party and then they're like, we'll take it slow. So, you know, like we can figure out this confusion and these feelings and stuff. And then they get to the party, they don't take it slow, they're like playing with each other and they're sort of just like seeing who breaks first and it's very much Carter who's breaking first. He then says, oh, you need to put your address in my phone because I'm gonna take you for lunch tomorrow. So she puts her address in his phone and then they go for a lunch date the next day. They have lunch and then they meet Hank who is Carter's, like one of Carter's very good friends and he's a blind old man. And then they go ice skating, they're now at his house um all cuddled up and carter's just told olivia his like whole backstory of like how his dad died because he got hit by a drunk driver he went to a bar and then that's where he met hank and carter got really drunk and then went to leave and drive back home and hank was like you need to put the car keys down you are not driving anywhere that's how they met and ever since then they've been very close friends. That's where we're at at the moment. So we've got backstory on Carter. We've got Olivia and Carter actually trying to date each other. We are nearly halfway through the book. I'm just waiting for something to go wrong because something always goes wrong in these types of books. We'll have to see which one f***s up. My money's on Carter because me and him have beef. Okay, I do not trust that man as far as I could throw him and that's not very far so we'll have to wait and see but that's the update oh my god I completely forgot to mention why I like started that past segment with me going what the f Carter like nips her feet with his teeth he puts a foot in her mouth and I no no that is not how you earn brownie points from me do not put Olivia's foot in your mouth Jesus Christ okay I'm on page 265 and Oh, God damn it! I cannot believe the words that I'm about to say. But Carter Beckett is growing on me. I don't hate him as much as I did in the beginning. His communication skills are unmatched, okay? Olivia tried to self-sabotage and he nipped that in the bud very quickly and he was just speaking sense and I hated every minute of it because you know me, this whole video I've been like, I hate Carter Beckett, I hate him, blah, 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 blah. I hate him. Hate him. And for some reason, I just hate this guy. I actually hate him. And now he hasn't won me over completely, but it is, he's getting there which oh i hate i hate the fact that i'm saying this because my whole shtick like my whole brand was just i hate carter beckett and now he's here being a good person and communicating well like every man should and no mm, god damn you carter beckett okay i'm on page 344 i haven't even gotten that far since i last updated you guys but can i just say i am bored to tears of this book now <laughs> nothing's happening like we're just watching their relationship play out and quite frankly I couldn't care less and I'm only 70 I've still got like 24 percent left which probably isn't a lot but it feels like it's gonna take me five years to get through so that's the update so I finished the book around the 70 percent mark um as I said in my last segment bored to absolute tears there was nothing going on I it's one of like the things I hate about romance books is when they get together and then suddenly you're just watching them have a relationship and to me I don't care because it's always the same they're like being nice and it's all fluffy and I'm like great but where's the tea do you know what I mean and then around the 80% mark there was tea and I was like okay do you remember when I said I was waiting for one of them to f*** up like earlier on in the video and I said that my money was going to be on Carter. Called it. Well, okay. I didn't... Um, I called it to an extent. Um, he got himself in a predicament. Basically, Vancouver win the Stanley Cup. And if you don't know about ice hockey, basically the Stanley Cup is like the, the big cup that all the teams in the NHL play for. Okay? It's like the biggest trophy you can get in ice hockey and so they win the stanley cup and then they're all out for dinner and olivia and cara 
go home. Carter stays with the team because it's like a boys night and they're celebrating their win. He goes to the toilet and he's like got his phone out or whatever and he puts it on the side and he's like freshening up and whatever. A woman comes into the toilets because it's like a unisex toilet and he leaves and then he says goodbye to Olivia and when he's outside the restaurant or bar wherever they are another girl comes up to him so the blonde so the blonde girl who came into the toilet for the tampon comes out and she's like trying to you know get with him and whatever and he like turns her down she's not taking no for an answer and then another girl comes up i didn't tell you guys this subplot because to be honest i really didn't care much for it um I didn't care a lot about this book, but we'll get into my thoughts in a bit. So basically there was one, so Adam, who I've mentioned before, um, is one of Carter's teammates. He was dating this girl called Courtney and Courtney never really showed up in this book because she was never present whenever the whole group was together. She'd always make an excuse as to why she couldn't go out or like she just didn't want to. And basically her relationship with Adam was falling apart throughout the book and it's such a tiny subplot that you just completely forget about it and then <sighs> adam finds courtney sleeping with another man in their house and so he breaks up with her the gang get together and they basically kick courtney out of adam's house and is like you need to leave none of us like you you're horrible blah blah blah, blah all of this stuff and it all goes down courtney then leaves courtney then comes back at the end of the book when we're at this restaurant so bringing it back to you know where we were before i gave you the context so the blonde girl's with carter olivia and cara have left at this point by the way and so it's just carter outside this restaurant with this blonde girl and courtney and courtney goes up to him and is like you left this in the bathroom and she's holding his phone which obviously the blonde girl got when she went into the toilets courtney's like there's something i need you to do for me and that's where one of the chapters ends in like the two chapters that follow this situation that happens carter comes back to the house to his house and olivia's moved in at this point so olivia's there and she's like where have you been it's seven o'clock in the morning you've never stayed out this late without letting me know what's going on and he won't look at her he won't talk to her he's like crying like his eyes are really red and olivia's like what's going on and carter's like i'm so sorry i love you blah blah blah, blah. And olivia's like you didn't cheat on me like you wouldn't do that and carter's just like i'm sorry and so immediately olivia's like oh, absolutely not and she leaves because there was an article i forgot to mention this there was an article that came out that morning which had pictured carter with courtney and the blonde girl and they were seen going into a hotel together and carter doesn't like disagree he just is very quiet and all he says is i'm sorry and he's like it's all broken i don't know how to fix it in the following chapters they're all in carter's point of view right so the next few chapters we find out what happens okay so what happened was courtney found carter's phone and throughout the book carter has been going on about this album that he has on his phone which has explicit photos of olivia right and of them together and he put a password on the album so no one can get into it but he didn't think to make the password hard to guess so he just put it as olivia's birthday courtney obviously found it and she says to carter if you don't come with me and pose for the cameras i will leak all of these photos and basically destroy olivia's career her life your life i will ruin your reputation as a good guy now that you've got going on for yourself i like i will ruin your life and the reason she does that is because she blames carter for ruining her life for getting involved in the breakup between adam and courtney so he does it to protect olivia he is so worried that olivia is going to leave if he tells her what happened that he just doesn't explain anything which is the dumbest thing I've ever read in my life. Because would you rather come clean to your girlfriend about someone trying to commit a sense of revenge porn? Or would you rather have her like just think that you cheated? And his excuse was, oh, well, Courtney wanted me to break up 
with Olivia because if I didn't then she would release the, like she would post all the photos and everything so for the next few chapters I was just I was losing the will to live anyway Carter calls the police and he files a report and there's an investigation that's opened up uh, because it's to do with like defamation revenge porn Olivia sort of has this revelation and she's like Carter's always been there for me every time it's gone wrong he's always said we're in this together we'll work out together she says to Cara this is a time where I need to stand by him because I trust him and I love him and I know that he wouldn't do that to hurt me like he would never cheat on me he'd never do anything that would intentionally hurt me so she goes to Carter and she's like we're gonna work this out together okay it's me and you against the problem not me versus you which is a good sentiment to have I think it just in general just a little PSA it's always in relationships that's how it works okay and then they work it out and that's it so <laughs> the book ends with Emmett and Cara getting married because do you remember they were they got engaged earlier on in the book so they get married at the end of the book carter proposes to olivia at the end of the book and we find out she's pregnant and that's how it ends can we just have a moment of silence please for the absolute time i've wasted reading this book final thoughts on consider me by becca mack my love hate relationship with carter still very much there he does nice things and then just loses all brain cells and it oh, it's just he's 28 i thought he was 25 he's 28 lord jesus please it, and it, it all just felt a bit fumbled like the whole relationship aspect of it so like the second half of the book just felt clunky almost in my opinion there wasn't really a lot that i enjoyed um whereas the first half was you know well they won't they get together you know it was very much a cat and mouse game and then they get together and it's just like well what now there was banter but it it <laughs> wasn't enough <laughs> the writing style is easy to get through it's not complex it's not difficult it's very much a light read i'm probably gonna rate it three out of five stars because i did enjoy some aspects of it i did enjoy a lot of the dynamics between the characters if you want to read it knock yourself out and while you're at it knock me out too because what the hell was that so i am a broken woman i just can't believe i read it because what the fuck was that yeah thank you so much guys for watching i hope you enjoyed uh coming with me on this journey if you've read consider me let me know your thoughts did you love it did you hate it did you just kind of think it was middle of the road yeah if you have any other books that you want to see me do a reading vlog on let me know um i'm not sure what book i would do next for a reading vlog we'll find something thank you so much again guys for giving me your time and your patience all my social media links will be down below if you want to go follow me on those and i will see you guys in the next video bye <laughs>